Welcome to another video. Imagine me showing you what I'm about to do. I get this and I'm asked to break it into simpler fractions, that is partial fraction decomposition. And I look at this and I go, oh, it's already in factored form. And each of the terms in the denominator is linear. Whether you have two of them or three of them or four of them, and I go, yeah, I know what A is. And you say, how do you know what A is? I go, if I remove this guy, I know my answer is going to be negative 1 over negative 2. It's 1 half. And I say, I know what B is going to be because B is on top of X minus 1. I cover up this guy and I say it's going to be 1 times 3 in the denominator and on top, it's going to be 1. So it's 1 over 3, one th one third. And I tell you what this is going to be. I cover this up and I tell you it's going to be um, that 6 in the bottom and on top I'm going to have negative 5. It's negative 5 over 6. And I'm done. Just by looking and covering stuff up. This method is called the cover-up method. It is the fastest method for you breaking down any fraction into partial fractions, any rational um, expression into partial fractions, if the factors in the denominator are linear. Now, when you have repeated factors, you may not be as fast. You may have to borrow some of the other strategies into getting what the coefficients, I mean, what the coefficients are, or what you call the numerators. Otherwise, I would say anytime the denominators are all linear, use the cover-up method because it's going to be super fast. So you see, I just answered this by covering up. So what did I do exactly? Let's get into the video. This is what I did. I said, if I look at A, the denominator is just X. What do I not want in the denominator? I don't want X to be zero. Now that zero is what I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna go here and say, okay, I don't want X to be zero, but I'm going to plug in zero into this part. I'm gonna forget about whatever is happening here. Just plug in zero here. If I plug in zero here, I'm gonna have two times zero minus one, which is negative one. This is going to be negative 1. This is going to be plus 2. So I have negative 1 over negative 2. Negative 1 over negative 2 is going to be, so watch this. I'm going to say that A will be equal to, you see that's 0 that I don't want. I'm going to plug it in here. It's going to be 2 times 0 minus 1 divided by, remember this is covered up because it's the number here that we don't want. The rest of it is going to be 0 minus 1 multiplied by 0 plus 2. You notice that this gives me 0 minus 1 over, this is minus 1 times 2, which is minus 2, and this is 1 half. Now you might say, well, isn't that exactly what we do whenever we do the normal choose a good number to substitute to eliminate everything else? Yes, but that one you have to first write out an equation. In this case, you don't need to write any equation. Just look at the number you don't want, go plug it in, and avoid that same term in this side. So here, I got my a. I'm gonna show you how it, practic how it works in practice. So we will get a equals one half. Let's do that for b. So for b, the number I don't want is one. See how easy it is to go here and get your b. So I'm gonna say b is, I don't want one, so I'm gonna, cover up this one. So this guy is not part of my calculation. I'm covering this guy up. So I'm going to have 2 times 1 is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. So on top of it, I'm going to have 2 times 1 minus 1 over, this is going to be, remember I'm covering this guy up, so it's going to be 1 times 1 plus 2. This gives me 1 over 3. And that's my answer. Okay, now, do the same thing for C. 
C is going to be equal to, um, we don't want negative 2. So we're going to go here and say it's going to be 2 times negative 2 minus 1 over, this is going to be negative 2 times negative 2 minus 1. We ignore this one. Well, what do we get here? We get negative 5 over, this is 6. And that's our answer. Now, if you can do any of these mentally, actually, you should be able to do it if you're taking calculus 2 in the first place. So if you're taking calculus 2 and you need this for integration, this is what you need to do. It makes you faster. You don't have to write so many things. Now, if you're sure you, you can do the math in your head, you go from this to the answer. Okay, let me show you what I mean. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to write my answer. My answer is going to be the natural log of x plus 1 plus the natural log of x plus 3 plus c. I decided to not write this because I'm not sure if this is going to be positive or negative. Okay? But I know that these are going to be because these are linear. So what's going to be my coefficient, my a, what's going to be my b? These numbers are what I need. So in my head, I know my answer is going to be a plus. This is it. This is the answer to your integration. Always, whenever you have this case. So what is my a, what is my b? Instead of writing a, b, I just do my cover-up method. What number do I not want here? I don't want this to be minus 1. Go plug in minus 1 here, avoiding this. Minus 1 here makes this minus 2, and this makes this 2. What is minus 2 over 2? It gives you minus 1. So this is negative. You go here. What number do I not want? I don't want negative 3. I'm going to go here, avoid this, and put negative 3 here. That's negative 6, and this is going to be negative 2. Negative 6 over negative 2 is positive 3. So I know that my b is going to be positive 3. And I'm done. My answer is done. I'm good. That's the cover-up method. You try it. It makes your life a lot easier whenever you have linear factors. Now, if this is squared, uh, yeah, I would not recommend it because after using it for the ones that are not squared, you'll still have to come back to use any of those other methods that we've talked about or strategies that we've talked about. So, but I just want you to see the advantage of you knowing this. It makes your life a lot easier because there are many tasks you'll be performing that the main focus of it is not partial fraction decomposition. If the topic is partial fraction decomposition, well, you might have to show your work like this. But if it is not partial fraction decomposition, it's just a step in your integration, yeah, this saves your life. Okay, so now, why does this work? Why does this thing work? This is the reason. Whenever you have Let's use, let's use this same one that I've used here. Look at this. Typically, when we try to find A, B, and C, we say multiply every term or both sides by this LCD. And then we're going to have a linear equation. We write everything out. But for the cover-up method, that's not what we're going to do. We're going to say, hey, I'm only interested in knowing what A is. So I'm going to multiply everything by x. So, if you multiply every term by x, watch this. Let's just put x there. Multiplied by x. Multiplied by x. And you also do that here, times x. What happens is, this, let's use this one. This guy because you're only interested in this, this guy is going to take this guy out. So what you have left is 2x minus 1. Oh, I don't need the parenthesis. Over x minus 1, x plus 2. That's what is left here. On this side, this guy takes this guy out. What you have left is just a. And guess what? 
what you have here is still what it is, plus this is now b times x, bx over x minus 1 plus cx over x plus 2. Now what you notice is my focus is now on a. If I make x equal to 0, that's the number I'm trying to avoid. Remember, the number we avoided here was 0. That's why we had to cover up this. The cover up just means it's been canceled. So when you plug in zero here, plug in zero here, this becomes zero, this becomes zero. So you don't need to worry about these two, your focus is just on A. You come to this side and plug in zero, but you see X is no longer there. So the cover up is just to, to avoid this extra step of multiplying for each of them. That's why we call it the cover up method. This is what we're actually doing. But you don't need to show this. Okay, because now if we plug in x equals zero, these two will go to zero, and then that zero now works here. So you can have two times zero minus one, which is minus one, and then you have minus one times two, which is minus two. So minus one over minus two gives you one half. That is the point of the cover-up method. It always works whenever the factors in the denominator are linear and not repeated. Now, what does not repeated mean? It means that you don't have like a square on this one. Because if you had a square on this, it's not like the cover-up method would not work. But you see, once this is squared, you're not going to have two terms like I had here. You're going to have three terms. You're going to have one this, you're going to have one this, and you're going to have one without the square. That's the rule. Now, it's going to work for this and work for this one with the square, but it would not work for the one without the square. You'll have to compare coefficients or multiply out the terms or do something. And if you're going to get to that point, why not just start that way in the first place? So that's why I personally recommend this cover-up method only when the terms in the denominator are linear and not repeated. Hope you learned something. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.